Hi guys. Hi. Welcome back to the channel. It's Maddie and Madison from Spectrum Art. From Spectrum Art Creations. Now, we were getting ready to start playing and then I thought, wait, um, why not just show them you guys how to use it? Yeah, exactly. Why not make a video since we're playing anyway? And what we're playing with today is this typewriter. Yeah, it's um it's the one of the new Physics. Tim Holtz Sizzix um 3D texture plates. It's an embossing folder, but it's taking an embossing folder to a next level, right? Because it's mm -hmm. the 3D textures. And you're right, it's called typewriter. Okay. So if anybody's looking for that, and if um, we have it in stock, I will be sure to put a link down below so you guys can head out to the store and find that there. Also, we're going to play with our. Um, uh, well, no, our Viva. Paints. 3D paints, yeah, which is super appropriate, right? Because it's 3D texture fades and 3D paints. Um, and try and create some cool looking combinations of grungy uh, textured plates. Yeah, you can hold it up here. There you go, cool. Gotta bring it up, otherwise, that glare will get us every time. So, and I'll put a link to those as well. So, um, we're just gonna hop right in without too much chit chat and yeah. hope that you guys will come along and play as well. I am so sorry guys, uh, this is the third time I've actually shot this segment. I do not know what is happening with my camera, it just keeps shutting down and saying, you know, whatever, and then the file is lost. So I'm hoping that three times the charm, <laughs> because um, this will be the third time. As you can see, we've already done two different sheets, and I've tried um, showing you guys stuff, and unfortunately, it has not um, happened. It just keeps crashing. So please, let's hope, let's pray together that this one will actually hold. Um, and I, all that we've done is we actually ran some paper through the embossing machine, and using our embossing folder, right? And then we talked about some of the Viva paints. I'm trying to recap what I've said. I did some swatches for you to kind of explain to you why I decided to do the uh, Viva paints. And basically the reason why is because Viva paints have two different um, applications to them. I'm sure they probably have more, but that I know of. Um, they have the 3D effects, which is more of like a stone metal look. And then they have the smooth application, which is more like a suede. And I can show that to you real quick. Um, with just a piece of paper so and the one thing to know about um, Viva paints also is that they are permanent so clean off your brushes and stuff right away if not you are gonna have a hard time I'm not kidding even on metal so um, I'll show you once again what I did basically I just took some of my paint and I put it onto my sponge brush and you like I said you can apply it one or two ways if you pounce it it is going to create a stone, gritty 3D effect, okay? And it's gonna be a darker, rich color. Here, I'll show you that. And then I'll show you the difference between the two. See that? Really yummy. If I actually swirl it or brush it, it's going to create a suede look. I mean, that's what it reminds me of. You guys can tell me in the comments if it reminds you of something else. but. If you circle, if you do circle applications, it's going to look more like a suede and wait till it dries. It's even more apparent like that swatch. And you can see that the color difference here, I'll show you the dry one, is significant as well. So you can use it like a suede and get a lighter tone. You could use them as a, you know, more of a stone metal look. Um, and again, you can even mix and match them because they look like two different colors, to be honest with you, but it's just from one. So you could get two colors and two different applications from just one jar. Okay, so what I had done was I had gone in with the dark brown first and kind of pounced on it a little bit to give it even more texture. And then I went back and just lightly touched up with the gold. And one of the things that I was mentioning is you can go as deep as you want. You can go as light as you want. And um, the other thing is you want to do it in layers. So you don't necessarily want to get very, very heavy handed. You want to come in lightly and then you can always build and add, right? It's easier to add on than to try to remove. So all I'm doing is I am loading up my sponge and then I'm coming in. At first, I'm gonna go light 
because I don't want to, you know, um, be heavy handed. And like I said, then have to be like, oh no, I don't like that one piece. I'm going to go light. And as the paint starts to, you know, be used up, then I start applying a little bit more pressure just to get more paint out of that sponge, right? So again, I'm starting off light, very gentle, very soft. This is such a pretty technique. I love how it just looks. Oh, I mean, the embossing folders are gorgeous to begin with, but this just gives it that extra something, right? And again, this is just highlighting the areas that are raised. The 3Ds have three different layers, basically. They have your, um, like a lower tier, then a middle, and then like a higher, right? Uh, your flat, your next, and then a higher level. If that's, I don't even know how to explain it. So if you look at, if you look at the letters, they are raised higher than the keys, but the keys are still higher than your paper. Let's see if it's easier to see this way. You see? There's like three different lay layers, right? Or three different levels. And so that's what makes them super, super special. And plus they have all this grainy stuff in between too. So I'm trying to hit some of that. When I think, okay, that kind of looks cool, right? Look at that. Now I'm gonna come in with my gold. And by the way, this is that's why I'm using this because this is about the only thing that I've found that this stuff doesn't really stick to. <laughs> really really fast as it dries and I can still scrape it and wash it and you know I mean look it's already like stuck on there but I can scrape it off of that um, your metal stuff you are going to be able to scrape it but you're going to have to put some elbow grease into it where if you try to keep it you know somewhat clean then you won't have to really struggle afterwards again I'm loading it up so I'm going to go light very light touches and pouncing as it dries I can come back and hit it up a little you know press down harder so this is just one of those things that you could do just relaxing it doesn't take a whole lot of effort it's just layering slowly which is great because sometimes you don't want to be like oh, all these details and right all right, and there you go. So now we've done three. Now, I've done it this way. My curiosity is how different or will it be very different if I do it the other way, meaning I want to experiment instead of embossing first and then adding the colors, I want to experiment with first painting it on. And these are just the little scraps, which I don't throw anything away. I don't like throwing, I don't like waste. So we're going to use them and experiment on them. And if it looks awesome, then we can go and do some, you know, bigger pieces, right? So I want to do the same thing, but now in reverse. I want to first come in here and do some of my brown. And again, we've got all these yummy colors. I mean, we can make some patinas and some, you know, uh, purpley colors and, oh, yeah, magentas. So we're going to try all of those. Why not? We're going to do some swatches here and see, because you never know what kind of a typewriter you might need, right? You might want to go grungy and steampunkish, but maybe you also want to add it to something a little bit more shabby, chic or um, colorful, right? All right, now we're going to come back and you can see how a little bit goes a long, long way, guys. I'm not taking a whole lot. And yeah, make sure you guys close them when you're done, right? Now we're going to come in with our gold. And then we're going to run these through the embossing folder. When they're dry, I'm going to give them a little bit of time to dry while I close these. And then we're going to see what happens. How does that sound? And it's either going to be awesome or we're going to be like, nah, we'll stick to the original way of doing things. And that's okay too. Because we haven't lost anything but two little pieces of paper and we have the experience of knowing whether we like it or not okay all right I'm going to close these up and clean up a little bit and then I'm going to run these through the embossing folder oh and let me excuse me let me show them to you up close so you can see all that I've done is add some gold and some browns and these two colors are I think I showed you this one already yeah, this is walnut, walnut brown metallic. I can close it all the way. 
and we have but we're going to play with all of them we're going to mix and match them this one is called gold okay and we've got more colors to experiment the one that i'm really super interested in is this one this is transparent so i'm thinking we can make this any color we want so long as we mix it right we'll find out or maybe create like this ghost-like print i don't know let's play with it and find out i'm going to clean it up and i'll be right back Okay, so now we're going to try to emboss. And by the way, these dry so quickly. They were basically dry by the time I just like closed the stuff and picked up. So again, make sure you guys clean up your, um, you know, your tools or put them in water. I'm just gonna grab the two papers that we made and I'm gonna put them in the embossing folder. And then we're just gonna run them through and see how it looks. Will we love it? Will we hate it? Will it work? The suspense, guys, the suspense. Okay. Ready for the ta-da moment? Let's see. What do we think about that? Oh. Good. You like it? All right, hang on. Let me put this away. And then we can take a better look. All right. So then there's that look maybe a little less paint although it's kind of cool maybe we could come back and also hit up some of those surfaces we could do that couldn't we yes and we can even choose a third color if we wanted to see how this one's darker this one's got a lot more paint but i kind of like that look hmm we could come back with let's say some alchemy wax hang on i'll be right back Let's look at some, ooh, how about something a little daring, why don't we? Dare we? Yes, I dare. Because I always tell you guys what? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. It is paper, we try it. And no, you're not, you're not really supposed to dip your fingers in your product, by the way. Um, I've heard, I've heard people say that they've actually gotten mold in theirs from doing so. You're supposed to use your palette knife and press it on, you know, get some of it out onto your table or your mat and then work from that. As you can tell, I haven't, it hasn't happened yet, but it's not to say that it cannot happen. So, um, just FYI, that's what I've heard. So I'm passing it along for what it's worth. It could be that I'm just lucky. It could be that, you know, maybe different climates or different, I don't know. Might have, oh, that is so cool. Do you guys see that green coming across? Now it looks like it's got some patina to it too, which is kind of cool. Check that out. And I'll do some still photos because I know that the, the light is gonna fight it, but do you guys see that? It just totally changed it from that, from that to that. Again, let me bring them both up. See if it actually shows up any better. You see that? Let's try it with another color. Let's do, hmm, let's try not to go so grungy. Should we try a pink or should we go even more grunge and go maybe, maybe some old silver? Let's try that. Okay, now I am going to need something to press on to because I got way too much product on my finger. Yes, I'm just kind of winging it, guys. Oh, that's delicious, too. Oh, look at that. They just popped right out. So you can see the difference between this row and even the bottom of the G versus the, these right here, right? And I'll put a link to these as well, guys, for the alchemy waxes. So I'll try and link up as much as I can down below in case, you know, you want to experiment with some of these products. And you can see how easy, easy breezy they are to use. Oh, look at that. So now we've got like a patina one and we've got a silver one. Very, very cool. Okay, so now it's time to go ahead and play and play some more. Even come back to some of these if I want to. 
uh, although I kind of like them, but we've got more and more. And guess what? We even have some white. So I think I'm going to try the same thing. I'm going to put some of the Viva paints directly onto the white to create that texture because it's yummy. It's really gritty, guys. It's so cool. It feels metallic. Um, and then I'm going to run them all through, try all kinds of different color combinations. I'll come back and I'll show you what we've got. And, you know, that way you guys can get an idea whether you like it, you, you know, you want to try it, uh, and which colors you like best. So we'll be right back. Here and, are the finished products. Yes, here they are. Thanks, Madison. So these were super, super fun to make. Like I said, we made them two different ways. Uh, we painted the papers, and I did actually write some of the names on these, but I'll bring them up and show them to you, and I'll do some still photos at the end as well. Um, we did some with the white paint, which turned out super stinking cool. Look at that. And then this top I did mostly white, and then this one I did white with some silver um, to kind of highlight so it's a little bit more muddled. It's more of a ghost effect than this clean one. Two different choices, right? We did some more metallics. Um, this one's a mixture of different metallics, so it's got like your um, Firebird and your silver and some gold and you know. Copper. Mm-hmm. And then these, thank you, Princess. You're welcome. These, um, also, I wrote the colors in the back just in case we wanted to refer back to them. These are just on black. Look how cool they turned out in oh, pinks and colors. purples and greens and in silvers and oh my gosh magentas all kinds of cool colors but these um like for example this one is the no not that one i wrote the names on them this one is the violet that's just black this one is the rose color oh my gosh the rose is so pretty it's like a rose gold i wish oh there we go oh for a second it's hard for it to focus with all the stuff on the table. Um, this one was the, this one was a mix. I just basically, anytime I had anything left on the pouncer, I just kept putting it on, you know, a piece of paper and that turned out super cool. This is magenta. This is just on black. Didn't write the name on, and this one's a mix too. See how it's got different colors. So those mm -hmm. are fun to play with your Let's colors. This one is silver gold. This one is another one that was a mix, and this one is gold. So, again, tons of fun. We did some more over here. You this, should try them, guys. Right? This one's like an ombre effect. Um, so you could do that. Just kind of bring your colors and, and mix them in. This was violet at the top, and then I had some blue left over, and I pounced it on there. This is your grass green, and then the same colors, but now on black. You know, you have your blues, your greens, your pinks. So they look completely different. Um, those are the same. They're just smaller tiles. But I wanted to show you guys two things as well. Um, number one, you've got to be cognizant of how you are sticking in your paper if you've already colored it. So this was supposed to be the silver, right? But I stuck the paper in the wrong way. And so now the embossing is on the wrong... Oh, wow. Sorry, guys. The embossing is on the wrong side of the paper. And then I did a clear one, which I thought was going to be super cool. Just the clear, see? It's got the clear coat, but guess what? I embossed it on the wrong side. So those two ended up going in the trash. So uh, just remember that. Make sure that your paper is facing the right way. And then, yeah, I'll bring these up to show you guys. What are they? What are they? If you cut them out, these are the, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, these are the same keys. They're just cut out. Look at these. Can you guys see that? Look at those. And I'll do some still photos. But they turned out super cool. And this is just on white cardstock, right? Using our 3D Viva paints. And then this is on black cardstock using Alchemy Waxes and the 3D Viva paints as well. And this is more like that um, patina type of a finish so super fun and they look just like metal but it's paper so super fun uh, to be able to use them as a background or to cut them out individually if you want to use them as keys or as dangles you know you have tons of different uh, options and colors that you could go with and you could even emboss 
um, you know, quite a few of them and just leave them ready if you want to do those, that. Those look shiny, don't they? They do look so pretty. So um, we hope you guys have enjoyed it. We hope you will try it. We hope that if you have any questions or comments leave that you... Comment. Yeah, leave them down below, right? Um, and we hope we see you all back soon. God bless. Blessings, guys. Hugs. Hugs. Bye.